1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Good morning. To get our hearts ready for communion, let's go to chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Let's read. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have been, you've taken stand on. By this, by this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I pass it on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins and according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the 12. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time. If Jesus rose from the dead, he shows he's a Messiah and he's God. And that separates us from other religions. If you look at Buddha's tomb, his bones are there. If you look at Muhammad's tomb, his bones are there. And if you look at Shemba's tomb, his bones are there. But the Jesus' tomb is empty. He has risen. And his resurrection had an impact in the disciples' lives. Historians tell us that Matthew was slain with a sword in the city of Ethiopia. Mark died in Alexandria in northern Egypt after having been cruelly dragged through the streets of that city. Luke was hung upon a tree, on an olive tree. John was banished to the land of Patmos. James the Less was thrown from a pinnacle of the temple. Philip was hung up against a pillar in Heropolis in the province of Phrygia. Bartholomew was flayed alive. Andrew was bound to a cross and left to die. Jude was shot to death with arrows. Matthias, the apostle chosen to, place, to replace Judas, was first stoned and then beheaded. Barnabas was stoned to death by the Jews at Saronica. Paul, after a variety of tortures and imprisonments, was finally beheaded in Rome. Thomas was run through the body with a spear in East India. Let's go to verse 50 in the same chapter. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all fall asleep, but we will all be, ch be changed. In a flesh, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the, for, the, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the, for the perishable must be clothed itself with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with imperishable and the mortal with, with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where our death is your victory? Where our death is your sting? The sting, of, the, the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So Paul is saying here, the only thing that lasts in this life is our soul. Our hope is not here. It's in heaven. Paul says, give yourself fully to the only, that's the only thing that matters in this life. Let's pray. Father God, you are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords. You are there in the beginning and you will be there in the end. Lord, you are holy, holy, holy Lord. Thanks, thank you for forgiving us all the time. Thank you for food, shelter, clothes you provide for us daily. 
Please bless the service, Lord, that will be pleasing to you. Bless the communion, Lord. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.